we're looking at improper integrals and we've defined how to find an integral from naught to inf or from any value to infinity or from minus infinity to a fixed value. Now we're just going to look at a generalization of the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the power p dx. Now you notice in the first video that we saw that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, that converges and is the value 1. While the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx was divergent. So we are now going to just look at generalizing what values of p is convergent and divergent. So firstly, let's look at the general antiderivative of 1 over x to the power p dx. Now when p is equal to 1, we saw that in the first video, in that example, if p is equal to 1, the antiderivative is lin x. But if p is not equal to 1, the antiderivative is 1 over minus p plus 1, x to the power minus p plus 1, plus c. And that's for p not equal to 1. So that's the power rule that gets us to the antiderivative. So we're going to look at that. So we already know when p is equal to 1, that integral is divergent. So we're going to look at p values not equal to 1 and see what happens. So we're going to look at the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to t of 1 over x to the power p dx. So that is the limit as t approaches infinity of the antiderivative. Now p is not equal to 1, so it's the antiderivative I've got here. I'm just going to write it a little bit tidier. Minus p plus 1, I'm going to write as 1 minus p. It's just easier for me to read that way, x to the power 1 minus p between t and 1. So that's the limit as t approaches infinity of 1 over 1 minus p times t to the power 1 minus p minus 1 over 1 minus p times 1 to the power 1 minus p. And this part will just be 1. And we know p is not equal to 1. So I can take the constant 1 over 1. 1 minus p out because my limit refers to t. So this is just a constant. So that's the limit as t approaches infinity of t to the power 1 minus p minus 1. All right, so let's look at what happens to this. So if I've got, and the conclusion is already at the bottom there, but we'll get to that. 1 over 1 minus p times the limit as t approaches infinity of t to the power 1 minus p minus 1. Now, if I look at this number going to infinity, all right? The value of p matters. There are two cases to look at, when p is greater than 1 and when p is less than 1. So if I look at this exponent, if p is greater than 1, this exponent will be negative. And it'll be bigger and bigger as p, any value greater than 1, I'll have a negative exponent. So that means this will tend towards 0. So it's definitely convergent when p is greater than 1. Now, if p is less than 1, this value will be positive. And we know if t gets very big, t turns to infinity to a positive power, that will be divergent. It will go off to infinity. So that gets us to a conclusion that if p is greater than 1, this integral will be divergent. As we saw for the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, we saw that one was convergent but it's divergent if p is less than or equal to 1. Now here we've looked at the case less than 1, but we talked about equal to 1 in the previous exam, the previous page. So please file this one away. We're going to refer back to this generalization when we look in the last video at the comparison test. All right, so let's move on. We've now looked at a constant to infinity or from minus infinity to a constant, but let's look at the integral from minus infinity to infinity. What we're going to do with that one if my function is continuous over that whole integral, and that's what I'm, a whole interval, and that's the integral I'm looking for, I'm going to pick a value between minus infinity and infinity, any real number a, and I'm going to break my integral up into two parts. Now we're going to choose a well to serve our purpose, and you'll see that in the next example. So as long as these separate ones can both converge, then the min integral from minus infinity to infinity will converge. So let's take a look e to the power minus 2x from minus infinity to infinity. Now, in the first video, we looked at 0 to infinity of e to the power minus 2x. So I'm going to do that part a little bit faster, but you can look back to the first video on that. But I will do the complete thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it up into two integrals, from minus infinity to a number of e to the power minus 2x dx, plus some number to infinity of e to the power minus 2x dx. Now, what's that number going to be? 
I'm going to choose zero. Why? Because zero is a nice number to work with. And it's going to suit my purpose. So now we need to look at the two limits. So I look at the limit as t approaches infinity, minus infinity, sorry, of t to zero, e to the power minus 2x dx. Plus the limit, and now I've already used t, so I must use something else, as b approaches infinity of the integral from naught to b of e to the power minus 2x dx. So what we have is the limit as t approaches minus infinity of minus a half e to the power minus 2x. Hopefully you know that's the antiderivative of e to the power minus 2x between 0 and t. Plus the limit as b approaches infinity of minus a half e to the power minus 2x between b and naught. So let's see what we've got. The limit as t approaches minus infinity of minus a half e to the power minus 2t. Oh, sorry, minus 2 times 0. Minus minus a half, so it's plus a half e to the power minus 2t. Plus the limit as b approaches infinity of minus a half e to the power minus 2b. Minus minus a half, so plus a half e to the power naught. All right, so in the previous video, I'm going to look at this right-hand side first. We saw this value is just a half, and as b gets very, very big, e to the power minus 2b tends towards 0. So this part goes towards a half, but it's this first part that we're going to look at now. This first portion is minus a half, because I've got just minus a half. The constant plus a half e to the power minus 2t. Now, t is going to minus infinity. So firstly, I'll have a minus times a minus, which will give me a positive number, and it's going to be a very, very big positive number. And e to the power x, as x gets bigger and bigger, goes towards infinity. So this part does not exist. This portion does not exist. The second portion we know is a half, but that doesn't help. So in total, I cannot find these limits. So I can say that these are divergent. This whole integral is divergent because I cannot calculate both of the limits. All right, so now let's look at this statement we've got here. The integral from minus 1 to 3 of 1 over x dx using the fundamental theorem of calculus is just lin x between 3 and minus 1. All right, some alarm bells hopefully went off. We can only use the fundamental theorem of calculus if this function is continuous over the interval. Now, 1 over x is not continuous at x equal to 0. It's disk not continuous there. It's continuous for values of x smaller than 0 and bigger than 0, but not at 0. So we can't look at this integral like this. We cannot use the fundamental theorem of calculus in this way. So let's see, look at examples like this. So if I've got a function that's continuous over an interval from one number to the other, to the next from a to b but here at b it's not continuous at the point b then i need to look at the limit as t approaches b from the negative side or if i start at the number a we'll have to look at the limit so we're again looking at limits but now it's not limits to infinity it's limits to a specific number and but yet again that improper integral is said to converge if the limit exists and i can calculate the value but it diverges if I cannot find the limit value, if it does not exist. So let's look at an example. Before we look at an example, just what we did with infinities, minus infinity to infinity, just to remind you that if I'm looking at an integral from A to B, I can choose any value C in between and write the integral like that. So we will use that. So let's look at this one. The integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over the cube root of x. The integral from 0 to 1 over 1 over the cube root of x. So we need to notice, firstly, that this function is not defined where x is equal to 0. So what we're going to have to look at is the limit as t approaches 0. We'll see now from which side, and I'll look at that clearly, of t to 1. All right. So if I look at the number line, I'm going from a number to the number 1. So t is, and this t... I want to get closer and closer to zero. So t will be on the right 
getting closer and closer to zero. So T is getting closer and closer to zero from the positive side. So that is important. So it's the integral from T to 1 of 1 over the cube root of x dx. So that is the limit as t approaches 0 from the positive side of the antiderivative of x to the power minus a third is then 3 over 2, x to the power 2 over 3. Yet again, you need to know your antiderivatives between 1 and t. So that's the limit as t approaches 0 from the positive side of. If I substitute 1 over there, I get 3 over 2. Minus, substitute t in, 3 over 2, x to the power 2 over 3. Or t to the power 2 over 3. So now we need to see what happens as t goes towards 0. As t goes towards 0, this first part is a constant, so it's just 3 over 2. t goes towards 0, this whole fraction goes towards 0, this whole term. So that'll just be 3 over 2. So I can conclude that the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over the cube root of x dx converges, and it's the value 3 over 2. So we treat them the same. You must just be reminded of how to calculate limits. So you must be able to calculate limits to look at this section. So in the last video, we're going to look at one more example of an improper integral of this kind, and then we're going to look at what is called the comparison test.